to you all for the final time here in these digs. It is the end of an era. It is today. It is now as I have hit the start streaming button for the final time in our lovely old school office that has served us so well. My little hovel, my little hole, which has you know, just a wall there. There it is. I'm right next to a wall. All the horrors and the hatreds and rolling around the floor all comes to an end today. All comes to an end today. As soon as this stream finishes, I will be tearing everything down and moving to our brand new home, our brand new digs. I cannot wait. I'm so excited. Mr. Chris has been working there for the entire week. It's going to be good, man. It's going to be good. It's been a lot of long, painstaking hours, but from Monday, everything should be smooth and buttery good and wonderful and all good things. Nothing's going to go wrong. Nothing's going to go wrong. It's going to be perfection and karma. It's going to be everything I want it to be. And I'm kind of emotional about it. I'm kind of emotional. It served as well, this little room, for the last, like, six years or something like that. It has served as well from having remodeling done, knocking walls down to make as much room as possible, to doing all that kind of stuff. We were planning to have drama time at the new office today, but considering all my equipment's here, that would have been a really terrible thing to achieve it's been amazing it's been a momentous it's been great and i'm looking forward to saying goodbye everything will go wrong chris's pc broke last night i uh, managed to get that working so that's been done my wife is feeling better hopefully and should be able to drive on monday and free me up to actually get started at usual times it's been a disruptive week let's put it that way it has been a very disruptive week but what better way to celebrate the end of the week than with some good quality drama time and finally a lot more Final Fantasy XIV stories have been coming in alongside our typical World of Warcraft ones. And uh, I am ready and raring to find out <clears throat> what goes on in the depths of Final Fantasy XIV. What lurks beneath this veneer of chicken heads and people in thongs doing squats and dressing in all kinds of bizarre manners. Is it all just a case of enjoying the story and then leaving it behind? Or do these people actually get up to crazy, wonderful things like we have seen? 90% of it is that. Mm. We'll see. Well, this one does promise to get us started because, of course, there is one thing FF offers that World of Warcraft certainly doesn't. And that is the ability to get married. I have visited two, or attended, I should say, two weddings in my time in FF14. And both of them have been much, much fun. Much, much fun. Uh, but I imagine there are a lot of people who probably take the in-game wedding very seriously. <laughs> very seriously indeed. So I'm kind of curious as to what road this takes us down. I really am kind of curious as to where this takes us. So let's find out together, shall we? As always, our stories are vetted by someone else before I read them. So I can join in with you guys and enjoy the tale as it goes. Uh, on Monday, we will be returning to the MSQ of FF14 Shadowbringers expansion, which has been yeah <laughs> it's been a journey it's been an adventure if i was to describe it it's been an adventure and it got a whole lot darker this afternoon in fact we finished on a very very dark and somber note learning about the trials and abuse and the <sighs> but i'm sure it'll all be fine i'm sure it'll all be fine i'm sure we're gonna save the day at some point and definitely be not be an emotional wreck Definitely not be an emotional wreck. I see that, Zai. I will read that later on. I see that. Let's start. We've got a story here called The Marriage Season. It's got, apparently it contains romance, elitism. Oh, okay. Can you have elitism in romance? Definitely, right? The chads, the alphas, the betas, the omegas, the whatever the fuck the, those guys are calling themselves these days. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what they're doing. But uh, we'll find out for ourselves. <laughs> the Sigmas, of course, of course. <clears throat> Each to their own. <laughs> Each to their own. <laughs> uh, I'm sure, I mean, if it helps you dating, go for it. Do what you want to do. Let's have some fun. Let's kick back and relax. Take your shoes off. Let's have some fun. All a preacher and a quet. See you all in the chat. He's right here. He's coming with me tonight. The quet is joining us. He has a home at our new office. Special thanks to the Final Fantasy XIV team for providing us with a fat cat enormous beanbag. As the official number one Final Fantasy streamer in the world for a singular month, it is my privilege to take the giant fat cat beanbag. 
Thanks. Appreciate it. I've been watching your guides. I've been a YouTube drama lurker since Warlords of Draenor. And actually, it looks like we've got a WoW refugee here. There's no judgment to be made here, but if the audience is getting guilty withdrawals, let me say this. And I say this without a hint of irony. World of Warcraft players, and I mean this wholeheartedly, I enjoyed Warlords of Draenor more than Legion. <laughs> Why? <laughs> For what possible reason? <laughs> Who would say that? What? Why? <laughs> Get out! <laughs> Get out! I mean, why? <laughs> For what? what objectify, objectify that statement, please. Objectify that statement. Expand. My greatest memory is wiping the raid at 2% on Halfus Heroic 10 Man by accidentally bopping the main tank when I meant to give him a lay on hands. I was kicked from the guild that day. That's your best memory? Okay, so we're getting a, a little taste of who this person is. This is a person who enjoys Warlords of Draenor more than Legion. And uh, he got his biggest, best memory from failing in a guild. So, I understand the kind of person we're dealing with. But today's story is not about the old World of Warcraft. Of course not. But Final Fantasy XIV. I've been playing both games at a high level since Ward and Heaven's Ward, but stop playing one of these games. I will let you guess guess which one. <laughs> yeah. Today I'll tell you of uh, how a new feature got me and my girlfriend kicked from a cesspool guild in Final Fantasy. There are cesspool guilds in FF? For what possible reason? For what possible reason would there be cesspool guilds in FF? I need to know. Guild buffs. Do I have buffs? I am totally blind on this. What buffs do I have? I'm in a free company. What's the buffs? What do you... Yeah, I know. I don't... I, I was totally unaware. I did all of a Realm Reborn without a free company, and then I just joined one, and it turned into a basically orgy immediately. Uh, so, is that the buff? <laughs> Experience buffs? Really? XP, food, crafting? Huh. Today I learned... I'll have to look into that. Remind me on Monday. Anybody who's here on Monday, I need to see where these buffs are because I have, I was completely unaware there was buffs in the game. Okay. <clears throat> A feature which I have yet to hear you t talked about since. Final Fantasy became more common in drama time. Eternal Bond Ceremony. A.K.A. The in-game marriage. Now, for all, all our WoW players and WoW watchers out there, Final Fantasy does have a an official marriage thing. You can pay money to have it boosted up. You get mounts, some clothes. They have cutscenes. You can invite all your friends. It has to be at a set time. It's really kind of cool, honestly. It's really kind of fun. Uh, the two I've been to have been really fun. I imagine that this feature has caused a disproportionate amount of drama compared to other features in the game, as it created what I could only describe as prom night for nerds. Here's the thing, and I should be clear on this. I've only been to weddings put on by my free company because they wanted the mogs, and they've kind of been a bit ridiculous. They're, they're, they're themed weddings, typically, like Honey Yellow. <laughs> I haven't been to anybody taking them really seriously. The last wedding I went to was between Resident Evil 8's Lady Domitresque and Final Fantasy XIV's Yustola. It was not a serious affair. There was Moogles. Um, the Eternal Bond feature is technically free, which is true. It is technically free, but let's be real. Everyone bought the $20 version because Diable Wedding Dress and Tuxes and also the first two seats amount in the game. A lot of role players and their e-girlfriends almost single-handedly paid for a new North American data center. I lie, but I imagine they made a shitload of money. <laughs> I bet they did, actually. I bet they did. I started playing FF14 at beta and had a blast. It reminded me of my first adventures in WoW, and honestly, it was very comparable. Servers were tight-knit communities where reputation mattered. What's our reputation? Probably a good one, I would imagine. Cooldowns didn't reset on any wipe. Ew, gross. Is that true? Yeah. Systems like accuracy, imagine wanting to hit the boss. Or my personal favorite, positionals. Hmm. Not a big deal anymore, but in 2.0, classes literally couldn't function if you didn't hit them. Abilities would only do half damage and not apply dots and debuffs. 
The game is much better now, but having survived these features gives you a Stockholm-like adoration for them years after the fact. One bit of friction which is important to the story, raids were sequentially locked. In order to step foot into the final coil, you needed to have killed Neil Vandanus, the T9 boss. In order to get into the second coil, you needed to kill Twintania, the tier 5 boss. Uh, I always thought that was the case. Is that not the case? Huh. <laughs> I thought that was... I mean, I've done them sequentially anyway. So, uh, I always... Not anymore. No, okay. I, I, yeah, <laughs> there's some confused people in the chat right now, like... <laughs> isn't that always the case? Because they unlock sequentially, right? You kill one and then it gives you the next one. All right, I don't know. Okay, let us move on to my tale then. Soon after the official release of the game, I joined a cesspool free company. Yes, Mike, they exist in this game too. I knew what I was getting into. I just wanted to see what the game had to offer before I committed myself to an MMO. As we all know, that is a big, big commitment. I would join comms and chat with people as we learned how to play the game. I wasn't an active participant in FF14 really until 2.3 as I was drifting between not having a computer good enough to play and dating a woman who absolutely detested video games. Good choice of a partner, by the way. 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10. Good choice. By the time both of those things had come to pass, I decided it was time, ladies and gentlemen. I must commit myself, body and soul, to Final Fantasy XIV. As I start to get more involved in the game and the free company and learning how to play, I start trying to make friends with people in this free company. I start joining extreme runs and joining TeamSpeak so I can chat with them using my real life voice. And here, I would meet the main cast of my tale. A Southern Comfort Black Mage. <laughs> Squ Squire. A, name of Sp a man by the name of Squire, a Southern Comfort Black Mage. Daedalus, our free company leader and a scholar. Jersey, our flex DPS healer. Sono, a white mage and literal mall cop. I mean that IRL, he was a mall cop. And the most important character, Mystify, a bard, an officer of the free company, and unintentionally the center of every guy who played in this circle of free company members. I take it that Mystify is a girl then? The center of attention, I think, is what you're saying there? The event that would f serve as the first domino was a question. Posed in the chat. Does anyone want to do T5? A few minutes later, I get a whisper from Daedalus, the free company leader. I see you're interested in raids. I see in the chat you're trying to get people together for a raid boss. How would you like to be the raid leader for the free company <laughs> qualified <laughs> okay so there's not that much different from wow <laughs> there is not that much different from wow you showed a minor interest well have i got more for you then buddy have i got more for you daedalus asked me to hop on team speak and i oblige he tells me that he thinks i have great potential by taking initiative and he would like to make me the official, official group leader, but not team one. Oh no, he's not ready for that. Not team two, but team three. Oh, blessed be the trolley. May the rails guide us to that promised land. Yes, Mike. Team three of a cesspool guild in Final Fantasy. Team three. Naturally, this was an absolute yes. How could I miss out on this position of power and authority? You see, by this point in my tale, the first coil of Bahamut was an unlocked lockout, meaning there was no weekly lockout on gear, and the fights could be done in any order. Normally, you have to do one, two, etc. in that order, but once the lockouts are removed, so is this restriction. And since catch-up gear was on par with the first coil and your tome gear was 10 levels higher than the first coil, there was no reason to do the first coil except the T5 to unlock the second coil. Another thing of note, 
Echo. No, not the guild. The in-game mechanic. By this point, the devs realized they had made a mistake locking tears behind the final boss of the previous one. So they made it to where everyone in the instance got a massive 20% damage, healing, and HP increase to help their noobishness. <laughs> that, and having access to gear 20, 10 to 20 item levels higher than what the tier even dropped, meant the fight was much easier than it was designed for initially. It shouldn't be that hard for us to get by this. Should it? So that means that I, a person who has never killed this boss, is going to be raid leading a team of people who also haven't killed the boss. Is T5 Twintania? Am I right on that? I think it is, right? Remind me. It is. Is T5 Twintania? Okay. Good luck with that. <laughs> that dive bomb, though. <laughs> Good luck with that. Yeah, I'm sure it's going to be fine. <laughs> yikes. <laughs> Big yikes. Yeah, dive bomb PTSD for the people who've done that fight. Uh, <clears throat> and that by this point in the game, they should have no reason whatsoever to not be able to kill this boss. However, I come to find out something very interesting, my friends. You see, it turns out that, yes, I am leading tier three, full of fresh-faced young hopefuls who have not killed Tuntania. But as it turns out, in our cesspool guild, team one and team two have also not killed Tuntania. Now, it dawns on me. I'm in a guild of shitters. <laughs> but also, it's a cesspool guild. What should have I expected? Now, our first, and I should... <laughs> spoiler alert, Mike. <laughs> only raid night goes really well. One of our tanks doesn't show up. And the DPS doesn't show up. Mr. Fi, who has no raid group, has never raided in her entire life, and this is her first MMO she's ever played, and a pug tank come up to fill those spots. I decide, as their leader, their glorious leader, that since no one here has killed Twintania, let's start with boss number one and see how we work as a team. Let's not jump into the hard stuff straight away, Let's all go to a boss everybody's killed and see how we do as a team. <clears throat> we all join Team Speak and begin our first official Team 3 raid night. There's a long trash gauntlet between the door boss and the actual floor boss, Asclep Asclep Asclepius. I don't remember this boss. One of the tanks end up getting lost and not pulling the gauntlet correctly, and we end up wiping on trash. No worries. It's fine. Everyone relax. We'll pull again. We wipe again on the trash. The healer Sono then begins to do something I haven't seen in Final Fantasy XIV before, and by all academic research does not exist. They begin getting toxic. Sono starts flaming us. Mate! Mate! Excuse me! Excuse me, Mr. Raid Leader. I don't have time to be wasted here teaching you how to do fucking trash in a raid, mate. Ain't got time for that, mate. And leaves the raid. Whatever. It's fine. We can we can manage. With all the buffs we have, I could just solo heal the boss. So, after two pulls on the boss, we do it. We kill it. And out we come as a team. Hey, Sono, why did you leave so quickly? Now, looking back, I should have probably admired Sono's direct, direct approach. But at the time, he tells me, Because you ain't good enough to be raid leading me, mate. You don't even, you, I don't appreciate your attitude. I don't appreciate, appreciate you even talking to me after I dipped the raid. When you don't know what the fuck's going on. Why are you calling me out? I did the sensible thing, alright? 
He tells me we'll never be able to kill anything. And certainly not without him. So that I should be nicer to him if I expect him to join into our raid. I then, knowing that IRL Sono is a mall cop, tell him, this is exactly what I would expect from a mall cop. And <laughs> this is really cruel. And on the back of that, I'll do what your employer will do, and I'll just replace you. I mean, that's low. That's really cruel. <laughs> that's like, re that's really cool. <laughs> it's very cruel. <laughs> that's, that's pretty, that's pretty cruel. This is after one trash, two trash wipes, I suppose. <clears throat> Unfortunately, it seems Sono is kind of a uh, Tolkien-esque type character. The following day, Sono spins a tale. He weaves, he weaves a little tale to Daedalus about how I kicked him from the group for being too good. <laughs> I wonder how that story went. I would love that. I get a message from Daedalus. He chastises me for not considering the feelings of the whole group before kicking a member and reminds me that this is not World of Warcraft. Because I kicked Sono, two other DPS refused to play with me for being toxic. And my tenure as the prestigious raid leader of Team 3 is officially ended on day one. <laughs> Don't bring that toxicity over, man. That wow brain can't do it. <clears throat> I spent the next couple of weeks pugging Twintania to clear, and eventually, we make it. I spent the next couple of weeks learning Mog and Leviathan Extreme. Oh, God. You spent a couple of weeks on King... How... Okay, I have a very twisted view, obviously, because I did it... With... I mean, I did it blind, but there were definitely people in the group who had done this fight before. How long did it take the average group to do King Moogle Mog Extreme? Was that like a couple of weeks of progress? Because that's insanity. That's like, I can't do that. A long time. <clears throat> it was very different back then. I, I mean, I imagine so, but Jesus Christ. A week, maybe, of that music? Oh, man. <laughs> oh, man. <Oof. laughs> so I spent the next couple of weeks learning King Moogle and Leviathan Extreme, and then I'd start teaching people in the free company who want to come and do these fights. This is where I get to know Squire and Jersey, members of Team 2, and also I start spending a lot of time teaching Mystify how to do the extreme fights. One other thing to note, extreme fights are locked sequentially like raids, so in order to do Leviathan, you had to have done King Moogle Mog. To do Moogle, you needed to free, etc, etc. So, there was a lot of going back, teaching people the basics and carrying them so we could move on as a team. We would devote entire weekends to just getting the free company members caught up. Eventually, this turns into teaching people Twintania. So these friends I've made can catch up to us who are now doing the second raid tier. One day, in free company chat, I'm asking a question about Twintania. Groups 1 and 2 having cleared by now, so this is coming from people in the free company who are just pugging like me. As I'm answering the questions... I get bombarded in free company chat by our prestigious leader, Daedalus. Ooh, look at me! I look how good I am! I can answer questions! And then he turns it to all caps. Nobody likes playing with you because of your know-it-all elitist attitude, bro! And more things like that that I can't remember. I whisper and ask, what's going on? What are you doing? People are asking questions, I'm answering them. He tells me my wow brain and elitist attitude are making him very tired. And I should remember that I am not as good as I think I am. I have seen drama time before. I know when it's happening. I don't respond to him, but I do, in good service to you and your chat. I instantly write a goodbye message and leave. <laughs> Clearly, I've overstayed my welcome. I sir, we salute you. We salute you for your service. We salute you for your patronage. And we salute you for recognizing the signs. Good job. Instead of dragging it out like some poor, sorry, dead carcass of a guild. 
I immediately get a whisper, though, from Mr. Fi, saying that she enjoyed hanging out and asked if we could still be friends and stay in contact. We eventually add each other on a message app called Telegram. And I message her every day for weeks. And we start becoming friends out of game. Telegram? The fuck is Telegram? Any country know us? Telegram? That's not a UK thing. Telegram app. Yeah, I guess it's like WhatsApp, but is it Russian? Is that what it is? It's Russian WhatsApp. Okay. All right, now we're clear. All right, comrades, we're going. Around this time, though, I get myself in an actual raid group, but I remain free companyless. Mystify, however, Mystify would invite me back to the free company. And I occasionally would ask to uh, be asked to help a group that Mr. Fi was in. Now, that group that needed help included Jersey, Mr. Fire, and Squire, my friends. As I helped their group get up to T9, Mr. Fi and I would become closer and talk more often out of the game and spend more time alone in TeamSpeak together. Unfortunately, as you can probably imagine, I had to dance around Daedalus and Sono, but I kept myself quiet. I stuck to my small group of friends and I didn't rock the boat. Then it changed. Everything changed. The new patch came. 2.4 release. And the Eternal Bond Ceremony would be released in December during patch 2.45. From October to December, as we all hung out in TeamSpeak, people would talk and gossip about who was going to get married to who so they could get the rewards, right? It's about the glam! It's about the mount! One day I heard Squire in voice chat say something along the lines of, Who, me? Oh, I'm going to ask Mystify to marry me. To which Sono instantly piped up. Mate, she's already told me she's going to marry me, man. I've got dibs on her, mate. I got dibs not marrying a guy, mate. That is gay. That is well gay. So I'm going to marry her, mate. I've got fucking dibs. Got dibs. Got fucking mega dibs. Turbo dibs. You know what I mean? Not going to be like gay in the game and that. You know what I mean? An argument breaks out between them as they each list. And I swear to you now, Mike, they made a bullet point list. <laughs> of why she was going to choose them and why their strong points of what she would choose them respectively. Mostly, it started to relate to all the gifts they had given her. Hey, Sigma males at work. Back up, kids! Right? I gave her a wind-up Emmerich. So, clearly, you know what I mean? I had never spoken to Sono since he was an ass to me early in the story, but this was the first time I had heard anything. To be honest, I didn't even think to ask Mr. Fi. I just assumed it was true, or she had planned to marry someone else in game. I mean, why would she? She'd only been hinting at it to my idiot self for fucking weeks now, but I didn't pick up on it because, well, I'm a gamer. <laughs> true. <laughs> <laughs> way too true <laughs> so true <laughs> what you like me like me i thought you just liked me for my game skills i thought you liked my tanking in dungeons what do you mean <laughs> oh my god she's we've got the mail <laughs> okay okay the next week she mails me the ring required to start the marriage quest Crafted with her name on it and a cute little message. And I'm not lying, I have the receipts 2,578 days ago. Oh, you kept the mail? Aww. Oh, that's really cute. You kept the mail? I have the screenshot. I, I don't want to reveal the name because the name's in it, but I can put the. Yeah, alright. So these, this isn't the, the mail. I have the mail with the official date on it. But to give you an idea that he's not bullshitting. <laughs> that's what she, this is what she sent him. Look at this. Because you're the most important person who has to be there. Exclamation mark. Art. Now you can see these are these males are from like 2000 days ago. 
Oh, that's cute, right? She made the play. She made the play. Ah. Oh. Okay, it's going to all go wrong, though, right? Otherwise, your tail would not be in front of my eyes right now. <laughs> so this is all going to go horribly wrong. <clears throat> Our marriage was the next day, and we invited everyone we could to the ceremony. The only person from her group who came, though, was Jersey. Everyone immediately came up with some excuse as to why they couldn't attend and ignored her. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking geeks, man. <laughs> Oh, this is so sweaty. Oh my god, I can smell this story. <laughs> I can totally smell this story. <laughs> this is so sweaty. I'm not going. You're supposed to marry me. I gave you my heart. I'm not going. <clears throat> Sodo was furious. He told me that I had stole his girl and that I had not honored bro code. Because <laughs> he had called dibs. <laughs> Squire was also mad at me because he said that I had heard his conversation ergo he should have been allowed to have a chance with her before I said yes it's a cue in their minds there's an order of events it's a hierarchy at work we all queue up at the door this is how it works girls this is how it works. What we do is we talk amongst the bros, right? We have a bro off what we do. And what we do is we basically whip out dicks and we have a little measuring contest. And whoever's biggest, they go first. And then we work out an order. And then when you're sat there, none the wiser, one by one, we approach you, right? But we don't say anything because we're sweaty gamer nerds. So we go up and we like fidget and we stink. And then we walk, we just walk off. And then the next person goes until someone has the courage to say something. That's how we do it. So that's that's bro code in a nutshell. That's how it goes. <sighs> now, any anger that I faced was nothing. Nothing to the sheer hatred Mystify got. So whereas I was too stupid to ask her because I assumed she was going to marry someone else, she had been proposed to for times by others besides sono and squire to which she had turned all four down <sighs> needless to say we decided it was time to probably leave <laughs> and we asked our one good friend if he wanted to come with us we told jersey that we were going to move to another free cumber free company and asked if he wanted to come he said he did want to, but he had to ask his brother's permission since he was an officer in a free company and paid for Jersey's FF subscription. Jersey told his brother, who then told Daedalus what was happening, and suddenly a message appeared that there was to be an emergency free company meeting. Fucking God, this is sweaty. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh my God. What's the meeting about? That she can't marry everybody? That there's one girl in the guild and she can't marry everybody? Is that the meeting? Are you going to establish some order here or what? Everyone who was online was to get into team speak and talk to us about what was going on. But it turned out everyone in the free company was saying that I was an elitist trying to then poach free company members. Kind of true, honestly. We did ask Jersey. And that mystify... <laughs> What do you think they described Mystify as? The girl who didn't choose them. I know where your brain's at, but you're all wrong. You're all wrong. No, yeah, you're all wrong. You think it's going to be the classic sweatiness, don't you? Slut, whore, all that kind of stuff. It's not, yeah, not a thought. Nothing like that, actually. You know what they actually called her? And I tell you why they called her this. Because these dumb motherfuckers still believe there's a chance. I cannot make this up. They still believe they're in with a chance. <clears throat> they said that Mystify was just a naive, gentle soul and that she had been hoodwinked 
by my elitism into marrying me. These sorry sacks of crap still believe there's a chance. A hoodwinking, a bamboozlement has occurred. A bamboozlement. And her gentle, gentle, perfect, perfect soul was just being naive. Jersey was then forbidden to leave after the meeting because his brother said he would cancel his FF subscription. And Mr. Fi and I were both unceremoniously removed in a kind of you can't quit your fired power play. I never heard from Squire again. Sono and I had spats whenever we would see each other. And I would childlessly try and get him kicked from whatever free company he was in after he was eventually kicked from the original one for being an absolute cunt. I later found out that Mr. Fi had been asked by at least seven people in the free company to marry them. One of which turned into a very not cool of constant harassment. Another person was mad she wouldn't meet them in person because he found out they lived in the same city and obligated to meet each other. <laughs> Is this guy a reddit mod or what wait you live near me then we have to meet that's the rules mate that's the i don't make the rules up mate i don't make the rules up mate we have to meet we have to meet that's the law in what turned out to be a rather sad turn of our events our good friend jersey was one of the people who asked mr Fi to marry him but unlike the other sweaties who got mad because a girl didn't want to date them he handled it well, and we remained friends after all these years. Many rumors were spread about her, which later we, she would find out. People would join party fighters and say things like, Oh, you're Mr. Fi. Didn't you send nudes to everybody in your free company? Of course. Of course. Of course. Let's get her, guys. I moved on from FF14 after drama started to follow us to play my favorite WoW expansion, Warlords of Draenor. This is entirely unironic, Mike, I promise you. <laughs> and then I returned back to play the critically acclaimed FF14 expansion, Heaven's Ward. Eventually, our in-game relationship blossomed into an IRL relationship, and we decided that long distance wasn't enough, and I emigrated to Canada to be with her. Ah, That's nice. He emigrated to Canada to be with her. Sadly, I was deported. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. I know I shouldn't laugh. Holy fuck. Oh my god. Oh, what is the story? I can't handle it. <laughs> which is a story i'll tell you another time <laughs> okay eventually though eventually i found my way up there legally when you say emigrated do you mean you drove to canada and just stayed there is that what you did i mean <laughs> later i eventually found my way up there legally and i married her in 2016 oh we now have a two-year-old little girl and life has been fantastic and he had sex good job son to this day my wife loves to point out that i made absolutely zero moves dude neither did i like honestly neither did i you know the day i found out that emma liked me honestly i thought she was too attractive for me i swear to god i thought she was too attractive for me and i was on the hunt for munters because that was my league i knew where i belonged and i knew my station uh it wasn't until it wasn't until uh, emma made me a plasticine frog uh bizarrely and gave it to me as like a gift that i thought there was something more going on she like spent hours making me a plasticine frog thing and i was like i don't i don't, I don't why be give me this i was so confused because i don't like frogs or anything <laughs> i couldn't explain to you why on earth she made me a frog but she spent ages doing it and she's like i've made you this and i was like huh <laughs> come here uh and now we're married to this day, my wife loves to point out that I made absolutely zero moves and she had to do all the legwork to get the relationship moving. But when you have stiff competition like Sono, what can you do? 
Thank you for reading the ramblings of an idiot. And I hope to hear more wedding release stories because I'm sure they're out there. I'm sure there are too. And I want to hear them. I want to hear them. That is, a, that is a high bar to beat, but I'm sure they're out there. I'm sure they're out there. That is a, a high bar, a very high bar, but I would love to hear more for sure. So get those stories in to drama at preachgaming.com or you just send them, or you can just go on our website. There's links there as well as all our drama stories. Look at that. Smooth. Um, okay, we've got, yeah, we've got plenty of time for another one. Sweet. Um, Braveheart. Is this a Scottish accent thing? Oh, no. What have you done, Bex? Oh, no. When I see Braveheart, I feel like I'm in trouble. I feel like I'm in trouble. Okay. Yeah, I feel like I'm in trouble. I cannot do a Scottish accent. It's impossible. It's impossible. Braveheart of the Badlands. Okay. <clears throat> I swear to you, Bex, if you've chosen this because there's Scottish accents in it or some dialogue I have to read, I'm going to be very pissed. I'm going to cancel your keyboard. That's what I'm doing. Uh, we need a guild name. We need a guild name. Any of our Scottish friends care to dip in? We need a guild name. I don't know if it relates at all to Scotland, but I've got the guess. <laughs> I've got the guess. <laughs> Freedom Fighters, <coughs> Scotland Forever, the Bravehearts, the Gibsons. <laughs> That's my small victory over the Scots. I'm going to call them the Gibsons. <laughs> the best Scotsman was an Australian. What do you think of that? The Gibsons. Uh, okay. <laughs> Let's go. Greetings, preacher, chat, and my fellow orc boys. Oh, God. Octar Ogar. I've been a long time fan of your WoW content and gaming opinion pieces, but I fell in love with drama time during last year as I lived through our own world's COVID scourge. I am from that London originally, but moved with my family to Seattle, Washington in the mid-2000s. So listening to you and other UK content creators helps me feel at home. Ah, oh, we don't miss you, though. Stay there. Yeah? Because once you leave, you're fucking welcome back, mate. Right? Born and bred. Right? Stay over there, mate. Stay over there. I played WoW for the Burning Crusades onwards until WOD. Beginning as the most predictable character for an edgy 10-year-old to pick on a video game. An undead rogue named Me Kill You. Um, <laughs> I'll have to paste this in the chat, but it's Me Kill You with only one L. Wonderful. That's that's the choice of a generation. I don't need to tell that in the chat. Unfortunately, he did not do a great deal of killing. <laughs> and instead spent most of his time dying to random mobs in Hellfire Peninsula. I didn't care though. Shadow Step was rad. <laughs> Good use of the word. That's why you're not welcome back to the UK. You're unironically using the word rad. You're not welcome. All right. You're not welcome. Doors closed. Yeah. Throw throw closed the gates. My smooth kid brain. That it made my fifteen dollars a month worth it. However, today's stories is not about the Outlands' worst assassin, but instead about returning to classic Azeroth with a now somewhat wrinkly adult brain. And all the fun I had along the way, including my first dabble into RP. Oh god, are you are you role-playing as Braveheart? <laughs> Please don't. For some background, my passion that I played was Dungeons and Dragons and other tabletop RPGs since high school. And I really loved the freedom and creativity they encouraged from folks. So when I returned to World of Warcraft for that vanilla launch, I thought it would be a good chance to try out roleplay for the first time. Of course, I was scared at first. After all, every long-time World of Warcraft fan has heard rumours about roleplayers doing unholy acts with that slash city moat, or the infamous Four Gnomes One Bear ritual. I do remember that one. I do remember that one. However, I decided that the rumours were likely overblown, and that truthfully, vanilla PvE content just wasn't hard enough to keep me interested for a long time. With that, I rolled on an RP PvP realm. If you're not sure what that story is, I suggest you look it up on the website. But uh, be prepared. It's grim. It's really grim. It's very grim. <laughs> As a horde, I get to researching the online equivalent of RP for dummies. Pretty hot. Mm -mm. <laughs> no. I found the list of add-ons I needed, and I got them all set up and wrote out what was probably the coolest backstory you guys can ever imagine. I always thought the orcs were the coolest part of Warcraft lore. Really? Boo-boo. 
and I'm a huge fan of the early books, so I decided I would be an old, grizzled orc shaman character. Plus, I always saw orcs as immigrants to Azeroth and resonated with that. I will now give you the bullet points of my orcish backstory. Prepare yourselves, ladies and gentlemen, for an epic telling. He was a Draenor-born orc who went through the Dark Portal as a foot soldier during the Second War. He was captured and sent to a human prison camp after the war, where he considered what the demon blood had done to him and his people. Eventually broke free in one of Thrall's rebellions and happily joined the Horde to follow him. As part of the Horde, he began studying the old shamanistic ways with the Tauran people and used that as a way to reconnect with pre-demon blood orcs and reconcile the senseless blood fury he had in the war. Leveling was a blast. I went enhancement and re-explored all the early zones that I had so much fondness for. While the Horde zones definitely feel unfinished compared to the Alliance ones, they have a special place in my heart. However, as with all Shaman, there comes a time when watching your character auto-attack loses its appeal. <laughs> I can't imagine leveling as a vanilla enhancement Shaman. <laughs> That's got to fucking suck. That's got to suck so much ass. So around level 42, I cracked and switched over to an elemental shaman. Chain lightning. You've got chain lightning right there. And I felt the power of Thor himself, the lightning god. Every two minutes, I could simply decide to smite some petty creature that dared stand before me. For those who don't know, vanilla Ellie shamans have a level 40 talent called elemental mastery which makes your next spell crit. <laughs> Ooh. Since Chain Lightning does more damage than Lightning Bolt, it's usually best to use this and Chain Lightning to start a fight with a huge burst of damage. However, due to spell batching of vanilla, you could spam Earth Shock right as Chain Lightning finished its cast and both spells would crit. It was like a big brain play. I was a god of storms. Nothing could stand in my way. That is, of course, until one day when I was riding back to Kargath along the northern edge of the Badlands and suddenly hear the blood-curdling dreaded whack of a rogue sap. We all know what happens next. I stood there, stunned for what felt like years. Elemental mastery on cooldown. And because vanilla male itemization was absolutely terrible, I was dressed, head to toe, in cloth. I took the time to plan. I dropped my grounding totems, popped my spirit wolf, then kite with frost shock and lightning bolt. That's when I saw them. Crawling out of the earth elemental line cliff sides like vultures to a wounded beast. With three other honorless and cowardly alliance pink skins. A human mage, a human warrior. What a loser. <laughs> and a druid human warrior. It says in brackets, what a loser. <laughs> Oh god, it's a loser. <laughs> and a druid. <laughs> Needless to say, my friends, I got wrecked. In one monumental fall from grace, I was deleted off the face of Azeroth before I could cast a single spell. If that weren't beating enough, they retreated enough so that I used my reincarnate only to be sapped again. The insect of a gnomish rogue had vanished and keep me sap limboed until his friends could come back around and kill me again. These were four in all in the same edgy sounding guild, the Gibsons. Laying there on the ground, I swore vengeance. My character was an honorable fighter, never engaging in alliance unless it was one on one and they were on full health. With honor, I fight. But these Gibson dogs, they worms, they fought without honor. I knew I couldn't leave it unanswered, so remembering Blizzard's most common motto for PvP servers, and more often than not a cop-out, I charged to Kargath. I was going to create an in-game solution to my in-game problem. As an aside, you can probably tell by how I'm writing this that I really, really like to play up the Alliance Horde War. After all, it is the thing that I originally thought was so cool about the game, and I think it's the core of what most people love about the world. Not me, anyway. <laughs> I can't speak for everybody, but not me. It's a real shame that they fucked up the story so hard with BFA because that was such that could have been such a good expansion, right? <laughs> right? Shoulda woulda coulda. Shoulda woulda coulda. <laughs> Shoulda woulda coulda. It always confused me that World of Warcraft just couldn't focus on being 
a world at war. Anyways, sidetracked. <laughs> I got to Cardath and still on my wolf, activated the fabled walk mode. Which immediately makes everything you say sound that much cooler. Pacing back and forth in front of the inn, I began my Braveheart-like speech to the six comrades in the inn. And I threw in slash cheer emotes for dramatic effect. <clears throat> is this what becomes of Thrall's horde? To cower by our hearth as Alliance Pinkskins hunt us like game and encroach on our gates of the Northern Valley. Have you no message for them? Are there none among you who, like me, wish to wet your blades with the blood of these cowards and drive them back to the petty kingdoms of men? Ride with me. Ride with me, dear brothers and sisters of the Horde. Together, we may drive them back from our homes and reclaim the honor they have so wrongfully stripped from you. Join me, warriors, for the safety of your kin, the glory of your ancestors, and above all, for the Horde! I think they were AFK. I got one message back. In the pink. Fuck off, loser. It wasn't like the movies at all. A couple of folks slash saluted me. And they flew away on the flight master. But. In that inn. In that inn. Two. Felt the call. To glory. An orc warlock named Sneaky Fox. And a Toran warrior named Mad, Pay Mad Payfish. Sneaky Fox messaged me and said. Is it that bunker? Is it that bunch of gankers mate? The ones near the Ellie spawns. Inv me, mate. They've killed me like five times. Inv me, though. Mad Payfish was a bit of a wild card, unfortunately. I later found out that he was just really drunk and hanging around areas. <laughs> Inv me, mate. I'll kill him. I'll kill him. I'll fuck him up. And like that, in my mind at least, I had formed a warband. We parted up and I taught them and talked to them in character. Thanking them and hyping them up a bit more for the war to come. I told them how we'd make them fear the Badlands and that the Alliance have no stomach for a real fight. If we pushed back, they would surely flee. Sneaky Fox responded somewhat in character with something like, Okay, war leader. <laughs> Our target should be uh, the mage first and then the druid. I'll nuke him. And then if uh, Mad Payfish, you just like kill the rogue. Already, Mad Payfish was lost to a blood rage, drunk on the prospect of war, as well as alcohol. He had no need for plans, no need for strategy. He was a warrior. But he did try to roleplay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, great shaman. I will charge in and fight. I'll hit the mage and the rogue bitch. For glory. Honestly, I was kind of loving this energy. He was getting into the spirit of it. He was getting into the mood. So we mounted up, decided to go up the Ellie Cliffs from the side closest to Cargath. I use Farsight to see if they're still in the same spot. I see their farming elementals near the tiny cave at the top. I told everyone stay below the ridge. The only attack, and they come to us. But Mad Payfish had other plans. He didn't care for honor. Bloodshed was his master, and his axe yearned for it. Instead of being sneaky, he decided to slash yell bitches. <laughs> we ran over the, he ran over the ridge line and charged at the mage, landing directly in the middle of the group. Sneaky Fox and I knew our drunkard friend was dead if he didn't jump in. So I popped up the, popped the god button and blasted the mage with a chain lightning earth shot combo. It bounced between the group and along with a shadow bolt from Sneaky Fox. That mage was fucking dead. The druid was the first to react, popping heels, entangling and rooting our warrior and started spamming Moonfire like a, pr a true PvP pro. The warrior charged Sneaky Fox and started laying into him. I focused on the druid, throwing earth shocks and lightning in his spectacle of a mountaintop shootout. That's when I noticed Mad Payfish was right. The rogue was a bitch <laughs> and also bad. 
They fell on Mad Payfish and started blasting him with Sinister Strikes. The rogue was four levels below our warrior. So like flies on a cow, this gnome was buzzing around this rooted tour and hardly making a dent. The damage was enough, however, to break the root. At this point, Sneaky Fox and I had zapped and bolted the druid into Night Elf paste. With just two left, the warrior was stuck in the horrible position of being feared and frost shock hamstring locked. All you classic warriors know that this is basically a checkmate. But the warrior showed a surprising will to fight for the alliance. The rogue, however, he saw he was on the losing side of this war. He knew vengeance was here and that soon the warband would turn their attention to the tiny underleveled survivor. He began to make a run for it. But much like the predatory instinct born inside of a hunting dog, Mad Payfish's attention snapped to him in an instant. Of inebriated clairvoyance, simple defeat was not enough for Mad Payfish. He wanted blood for his family. He charged the rogue and started whack a mole that tiny little head. The warrior finally fell and soon we all set our sights on the rogue. Using sprint, he made it most of the way down the hill before dying to damage over time effects. That battle was over. I roared a congratulation to our band and all slash cheered over the rogue's body. But why should we stop? We had tasted war. They respawned at staggered intervals and fell like flies. For three deaths, they spawned, tried to fight, tried to run. But what of the rest of the Badlands? Could we bring peace for the Horde to the entire zone tonight? The Alliance had been getting confident the past few days and would kill any who dared into their claimed quest spots. There were even level 60s who hogged, farmed, who had hogged and farmed the quest mobs for Elemental Earth and killing any people who tried to quest there. Tonight, the Badlands needed us. So I shared the victory in general chat and told them that we had a warband! People could join! Are you ganking? Was the reply. And three more people asked to join. We made it into a raid group. I gave another speech. And we became a roaming band of For the Hordes and have started having laughter with us. From there, we hunted level 60s, killed bots, and overall just had an absolute blast rampaging around the Badlands. Mad Payfish got drunker and drunker throughout the night until his messages became unintelligible. At some point, he just stopped moving and eventually logged off like a true champion. At one point, he'd asked me why I talked funny. And that's when we realized that he had no idea what roleplay was going on. <laughs> we tried a few more times over the next couple of months. But sometimes, at some point, he just quit the game. Sneaky Fox kept chatting throughout the night about the game and his life. It was like sitting around the campfire with my bloodied war friends. Eventually logging off once the bad lines were clear of Alliance filth. And I stayed in contact with those people that night. I had made true friends. All the way until I quit the game. Even running into each other in a dungeon group later on. He talked to me in character and we reminisced about the night we gained freedom for the Badlands. This event is the most fun I've ever had in a video game and the highlight of my WoW career. I continued playing in various roleplay guilds in Classic, but I've stopped playing the game because of all the scandals against Activision Blizzard Microsoft. This game had magic for me. It was so formative for me growing up. But it got to the point where I just couldn't play without thinking about all the things. Eventually, that magic is gone. And it doesn't come back. I am very happy to have had all the experiences I did in WoW, and especially this one. I appreciate Drama Time for continuing to share player stories like this one and remind us that WoW is always more about the fun you have with others than the game itself. Thank you for reading my roleplay preach. And I hope you and the chat enjoyed my war. I'd also like to say an additional thank you for being positive. <laughs> oh, thank you. You're an honourable man, I hope so. One that I think my character, my proud orc, would be proud to know. <laughs> Thank you. Stay safe, everybody. And enjoy your Friday evening. We will. We try. We try. We try. <sighs> For the final time, sat in this chair, at this desk. We come to the end of drama time, my friends. The end of drama time. Next week, drama time will be in a new location, a new locale. But it'll all be in the good fun and high spirits that we hope it is. I have to say goodbye to you now. And I, and I, I care more about this than you guys, but I will wish you well as I begin taking apart this, this area that I've sat in for the last six years. And on Monday, 
Monday morning. There will be some streams over the weekend, but it'll be me setting up equipment streams. But on Monday, all new place. Have a great weekend, everybody, whatever you're doing. I hope you had fun. And I'll see you when I see you. Bye, guys.